Jean, Raymond, Lisa, and all FOWs, which are friends of Will. <clears throat> Today we celebrate the extraordinary impact of a most exceptional man, Dr. William F. Bundy, Commander, United States Navy, retired. The most generous among generous, the most giving among the giving, the most joyous among the joyful. How blessed we all are to have crossed paths with this, what I would say is a one-man force for good. Before we proceed uh, this afternoon, I would like to take just a moment to recognize uh, one of our other colleagues and friends, Dr. Olinda Johnson. Um, Olinda had planned to guide us through this ceremony uh, in remembrance today, <clears throat> but, but, but regrettably had to attend to a family emergency. And Jean, I know her heart and blessings uh, are with you and your family today, and she's here in spirit. And it's a privilege for me to stand in her place today. So one truth in life that is, as families we often are not fully aware of is the depth and breadth of our loved one's work life. Each morning when we bid each other goodbye and head out to tackle the day's tasks, we return home, and when we return home, we often share the flotsam of our day, a Navy term there, that, uh, that we share highlights, we talk about the quotidian, the everyday, and we may even share some of our frustrations that we face during the day. But the truth is that we rarely fully understand the totality of our loved one's professional contributions how much their experience mattered and their expertise contributed to their colleagues, how they impacted the lives of their colleagues and their students, or simply just how much they are cherished by their work family. So during our short time together today, we would like to share with you what Will, around here as he was known as Doc Bundy, as he was, as he was known by all of his friends and colleagues, what he meant to us here at the Naval War College, throughout the Navy, and throughout all the communities that he served. And truth be told, if we were to let everyone speak today uh, that, uh, who wanted to speak, uh, we'd have to order out for pizza and we'd be here very late. So instead, we're gonna offer a small window here into the magnitude of the force we called Will. I would now like to direct your attention uh, to the screen as we have uh, a short video tribute to our friend and colleague, Dr. Will Bundy. Since I arrived, I've been motivated by Dr. Bundy. He is a connector of people and ideas. He approached people genuinely, and he modeled good leadership and mentorship. And that is something that's very powerful for people who are leaders and mentors and people who will become them. He leaves as a legacy a, a, a long lineage of Gravely students who've been through his programs and, and have changed the way that they think about uh, the future, nuclear arms control and deterrence, uh, and then extending that to emerging technologies. Uh, he's uh, affected many folks. Every time I traveled with him to the Undersea Warfare Center or to the Surface Warfare Center or to the Naval Information Warfare Center around the country, uh, he knew everyone and everyone knew him and he had touched so many lives. So his legacy are all the lives that he has touched and continue to touch. He has innovated on so many levels, right? Whether it's students, elementary and high school students that he exposes to science, technology, engineering and math, or it's his Gravely students or submariners who come here. You know, he really helps us think about the world even after he's gone. He helps us think about the world in different lights, in, in ways that we might not otherwise think about the world. His deep commitment and love of the U.S. Navy and specifically the submarine force. I think, you know, he viewed himself as a submariner uh, true and true and he really felt that the Navy was his home. Um, I was at his uh, private residence, uh, uh, you know, several years ago, and uh, in his office was just just crammed full of memorabilia of his his impressive career, both as a uh, as a submariner, but also as an academic and faculty member colleague at the college. He was very much that um, really really was um, part of his identity. Dr. Bundy reached out to me. Uh, once he learned that I would be joining the War College. I received this email from someone I didn't know. 
who introduced himself and had his bio and told me a little bit about himself and welcomed me to the college. That's just who he was. And I realized that um, later on that he was reaching out to me because he understood the significance of my joining the War College in a way that I didn't. And at the time, he was the only African-American professor on faculty. And what I didn't know at the time is that I would be the first African-American female on faculty. And Doc Bundy helped me understand and appreciate the significance of that. The informal responsibility to mentor and uh, support students of color in particular, students in general, uh, to ensure that everybody thrives. I think um, his standing up of what was uh, initially the Halsey Charlie group, which then morphed into the Gravely group as a student research group, um, his work um, on ballistic missile defense with that group, um, anti submarine warfare and unmanned systems uh, specifically, has, um, I think, uh, led to uh, innovations within the Navy and within the Department of Defense writ large. And that's only really since he's been here at the college. Prior to that, obviously, as being part of the Submarine 7, uh, African-American submarine captains, commanders, his legacy there is well known. And then also, though, between his military and his career here at the Naval War College, he also had a career in business and specifically working as the director of the State Department of Transportation. And, um, and I think he had influence there that many folks don't, aren't aware of as well. My little microcosm is the, the STEM program that we run and you know the Gravely Research Group that I had participated in. But as you, the more you get to know him and what he's done throughout his career, it's absolutely amazing the number of people he's touched. In 2012, he started this STEM program and it's grown um, to the point last year we had, uh, we had more students applying than we had space for and his perspective as well. Let's just get another bus, get another room. So he was passionate about it and we'll continue to carry on that legacy. The way he uh, enabled uh, thinkers and dreamers to come up with uh, lasting solutions for Big Navy. Uh, and, and he really acted as a touchstone for that creative thought that, that led to the projects and the research that folks did. I think that made a real difference. I think that's his lasting legacy, is if we can continue uh, to challenge each other and, and to challenge preconceptions and break down barriers and other things that, that folks think are inviolate, but he showed that no, just if you come at it from the right direction, you can solve any problem. Doc truly cared about the well-being of the students, not to say other professors don't, but he took it to the personal level. Um, for instance, even after I was, became faculty here, he was always involving me with uh, events and people outside of the college to try and um, get feelers out for what I do next. And it was completely unsolicited. He did this out of the kindness of his heart, um, was to, to try and look out for my best benefit. From the first talk on stage when he was discussing the Gravely group, uh, he, he really just uh, gave you a sense of how like, important you were in kind of the grand scheme of things. Like even though you are one of many, you are still a great one. You still stick out among the crowd, but you are part of the crowd. Um, and I think that he gave a real sense of that whenever he spoke. Um, all of his stories kind of revolved around that. You know, you are important, but you are also part of the team. Uh, Will Bundy was a real future thinker, and I really appreciate all the support he gave to our Unmanned Systems elective course. He was keenly aware of the role that unmanned and robotic systems are going to play in the future, and in fact was very instrumental in the Navy at large deciding how we're going to use these systems. Will had spent his entire career shaping the Navy as we know it today, particularly in the uh, undersea warfare arena. And he was spending a great deal of time shaping the Navy of the future. And we certainly will all benefit from the work that he did and we'll miss him greatly. Yeah, he goes to Hawaii a lot. I'm, I'm from Hawaii. I'm originally from Hawaii. So he tells me about his, his trips to Hawaii 
reminisce about that. He loves Hawaiian music, and so do I. And I know he, he knows a lot of people in the Navy, and he's touched so many lives that, you know, it, it's, it's just amazing to, to see all the people that he knows. And uh, we even got invited to his 70th birthday party, and um, it was amazing. And his family is so, so loving and, and very caring people. And, I really respect them, love them a lot too, as well. He sticks out of my mind all the time. Like he, he's, he's probably the first person that comes to mind when I think of Naval War College. And he gave me a real sense of what the Naval War College was overall. In terms of professorship, he's top tier. <laughs> Number one in my book. But he had the most impact on me because we had the most interaction out of all the professors here. Um, so. When I think of the Naval War College, I think of him. I'm going to miss him. It's hard to uh, walk these halls and kind of expect to see him. You expect to see this very debonair man in his always well-appointed suits. <laughs> Easy-going smile and welcoming to everybody. It's hard to believe that um, we don't have that privilege any longer. That's the hard part, but an amazing, generous, giving, groundbreaking pioneer. That's how I would describe him. I think that that was a run of the past. <laughs> Well, as we can see from uh, this, uh, this presentation, that, that Will was passionate about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics programs, STEM as it is known. And he spearheaded foundational efforts here at the college uh, to provide opportunities to young people to learn about potential careers in STEM and STEM-related fields. It's now uh, my privilege uh, to invite uh, Ms. Erica Watson, uh, up to the podium here to my left, a teacher from the West Side Middle School, a magnet STEM school in Groton, Connecticut, to share her reflections about Dr. Bundy and the STEM program. And I understand she has one of the students here with her, um, uh, Luke Lambert. So welcome to the Naval War College. Thank you. I'd like to give honor to God and to Mrs. Bundy and the Bundy family. And thank yous to Commander Santos, uh, the Naval War College deans, Admiral Chatfield, Grand Public Schools, Camp Poseidon families and supporters, and Luke Lambert, who's here with me today. Stand closer. <laughs> In the airport en route to see my dad about a month and a half ago, and my dad is one of the Centennial Seven as well. I ran into someone I grew up with whom I hadn't seen in years, and we sat together on the plane down to DC, and she said to me, you know what, you should think about doing something with the Naval War College, it's really cool there. And my mom was best friends with this really nice woman, and her husband works at the Naval War College. And he was always really inspiring and encouraging, and I remember that from when I was a kid. And not surprisingly, she was talking about Dr. Bundy. The school where I teach by day, West Side STEM Magnet Middle School, by our nation's submarine capital of the world, is a multicultural environment with the best educators and the best students in the world. Um, we have an outstanding trauma-sensitive staff, and we have recent achievements in statewide LA, which is language arts, math, and fitness scores. Luke Lambert is one of my former West Side students, and he's a shining star. In so many ways, as a young Marine, a strong, le strong learner, and a conscientious thinker. He's an aspiring Naval Academy midshipman, and he's a Camp Poseidon leader who's developed over the past two years through Dr. Bundy's program. Starting as one of the youngest participants, he was inspired by a man who truly believed in Luke's abilities. During the Black Engineer of the Year Awards in DC over the past few years, 
I saw Dr. Bundy at events and dinners and more. Oftentimes I would run into him in the hallway and we would have conversations about life. He was passionate about STEM careers for African Americans and he spent his time at Bayer facilitating, communicating and inspiring. Bayer is the Black Engineer of the Year Awards. It's just what he did. In 2015, he asked me to join the Camp Poseidon team as a leader, and he also asked me to teach about emerging infectious diseases. I said yes because of his positive influence. Years ago, he addressed an error that I made in front of a group of commanding naval officers, and I think one of the commanding naval officers is here today. It was on the quarter deck by the couch. I had two cornrows and long khaki pants on, and it was hot, and the sun was shining in the port side window. Not that I remember any of the details. Uh, I stood tall and still as he sat in that hefty leather chair, giving me a good old talking to, while the others watched in awe for me to break down crying. I didn't cry. Oh, I wanted to fix my error and then go hide, but his focus kept me focused. It was in that moment that I considered a few things. Number one, I'm glad that I don't have an oh, no, you didn't attitude. And number two, is this real how the military really is? And number three, this man knows his stuff, and he's trying to build me up no matter how painful it feels. This summer after Camp Poseidon, I did what educators don't usually do. I expressed feeling underappreciated. Here was the response. Erica, you are the mainstay in holding our camp on base. Without you, we would not have the leadership and council to host more than 320 campers. Thank you, you have my gratitude and praise. This was the last time I talked with Dr. Bundy. Here was a role model, an educator, a military trailblazer, an African-American who worked through so many trials through a system that told him that he wouldn't succeed. He was an innovator who took small ideas and made them into large plans, as Commander Santos knows very well. And he was a man and a mentor who encouraged me to stand strong, pursue my doctorate, and serve all of my communities with honor as a black woman in STEM. By the way, his plan was for me to provide health education and services to military personnel. This was his plan. Most importantly, though, he taught us to love and nurture each other in ways that we don't usually consider. Speaking highly of your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, inquiring about others, requesting feedback, and tirelessly building up our new generations of STEM leaders comes only after you show them that you care about them first. The best way to hear about Dr. Bundy, though, is to hear from one of his youngest inspired people. This is Luke Lambert. Um, as she said, I am Luke Lambert. I am a freshman at Fisk High School, and I am, I have attended the camp for two years, and the first year, uh, as Ms. Watson said, I was obviously the youngest one there. Um, one thing she did say before I went was to look out for Dr. Bundy because he would give you that praise and welcoming there, which he did, and he made me feel really welcomed, and he really drove my passion to come back to Starship Aside in, in future years and eventually become a leader. Thank you. Ms. Watson, Luke, thank you very much for those insightful and inspiring reflections. Also, as mentioned in the uh, short presentation was Doc Bundy's uh, that he was the driving force, really, and inspiration behind the Gravely Group, uh, one of our advanced research project groups here at the college that looked at a wide range of issues, both operational, technical, and strategic. And I would like to invite, uh, now invite, uh, Mr. Walter Benilia to come forward to share some comments about Will and the Gravely Group. Now, Walter provided, and he continues to provide, tremendous support to the Gravely students and was by all measures, and I asked him if I could call him this, he was Will's Man Friday there in the Gravely Group. And he really uh, was a partner, a true partner, and I know he was a dear friend. So Walter, please join us. Thank you, Tom. Good afternoon, Admiral Chatfield, Jeannie, Ray, Lisa. Uh, family, friends of uh, a Will, 
thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to express some thoughts about our friend Will. I had the good fortune of, uh, of being one of Will's students from 2011 to about 2012, and until most recently, a, a friend and colleague. In the summer of 2015, when I was transitioning from my Navy life to my civilian life, I had a chance encounter with Will via LinkedIn. He was looking for a teaching partner. I just happened to be available, so the timing worked out perfectly. Uh, the early days, as far as I can remember, uh, were filled with workshops. Many, many, many workshops. Workshops that were attempting to solve hard Navy problems. In fact, the majority of my time with Will was spent trying to solve hard problems. He beat a constant drum about needing to innovate faster innovate faster than our adversary, often saying we are in an age of constant technological acceleration. We need to move faster. And we need to think without a box. There is no box. So it's that very matrix moment uh, that we would often say over and over again. There is no box. We would talk about directed energy, lasers, quantum science, blockchain, machine learning, uh, anything and everything that can make the warfighter more lethal and more effective in combat. He felt the Grayley teaching staff, and let's be honest, it was me, <laughs> and later Tim, so you're out there as well, um, we needed to have a diverse understanding of the latest science and technology trends. So that way we can direct our research efforts of our students. It's always about the Gravely students. That meant a lot of reading. Or in Will's case, a lot of Audible, a lot of CDs, a lot of Audible. Uh, in fact, he once told me that I should become an expert in unmanned systems. We were sitting there one day, he said, you, need to be, you should be an expert in unmanned systems. And my initial thought was, how do I suddenly become an expert on unmanned systems? How, do, how does that happen? C could it be that simple? You know, just pick up a book and start reading and bam, you're an, you're, you're, you're an expert? And the answer is in Will's world, yes, that's the answer. That's how you do it pick up the book, become an expert. Which gets me to another one of his sayings that I'm sure you've all heard. If you can think it, you can build it. And so in his mind, if, you could, if, if the world meant for you to be an unmanned systems expert, then that's what you would become. He had an unrelenting desire to learn new things and to impact uh, people's lives with his lessons and wisdom. Uh, he was always teaching, always looking for that next moment to, to inspire and innovate. Uh, so those of you who will recognize what I'm about to say, let me know if I'm a little bit off track on this story. Whether you're a STEM camp student, a student at the Naval War College, a two, three, four star flag officer, or just happened to be in a meeting with them, Will would offer up a sea story, or two, or three, uh, then draw a parallel to whatever you're discussing, and then conclude, with a, conclude the meeting with a plan of action for you, uh, an action item that you need to complete, and a reading assignment or a homework assignment. Typically, the most recent book he had just finished or is about to begin reading was your assignment. I can't tell you how many times that I've, I've heard him say, I recommend The Fourth Age, AIQ, Superminds, or some other book that he's been reading. It's the constant drumbeat. He's always telling you to get, get a little smarter, get a little better. That was Will Bundy. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know if Will was a great man or not. That's not for me to tell or for me to decide. Uh, here's what I do know. Will was a man that he was meant to be. And we're all better for knowing him. Thank you. Walter, thank you very much for, um, for that perspective of our friend and colleague. Um, as we've noted, the the Gravely Group has had significant impact on many students over the years who participated in this advanced research program. And no celebration of Will's life would be complete without a tribute uh, from one of his many students, those students that he so positively impacted as a teacher and as a mentor. I would now like to invite Captain Joel Davis to the podium to share a few comments from a student perspective. Captain? Good afternoon, thank you, sir. And uh, Admiral, uh, Ms. Bundy, uh, good to see you again. Um, 
I, I really appreciate the opportunity to get to, to speak a few words about Will Bundy. Uh, that, that was a wonderful opportunity for me to get to meet him and to be a part of his life. And when I say that about a part of his life, he really became a part of my life. Um, when the mention of mentorship that, uh, that people have talked about through the, the video, as you've mentioned, uh, it, it was more than just a mentorship of these students here when they were here. He knew where you went, and he knew where you went after that, and he kept track of you. That's how he kept that network that he had. Um, and that was a, not only the commitment to the Navy and the commitment to the Gravely Group so that it would do these great things, it was the commitment to the Gravely student as well. You know, I've heard that from, uh, from several of the folks today, and it's, a, it's what we felt as Gravely students uh, was that he was also committed to us. Uh, when, when we were there. And uh, I, some of the things that I remember, I call it getting beat up by Doc Bundy when I was, uh, when I was trying to write my paper, because he allowed you to, the freedom to find something you were passionate about and to build on that, but he would guide you through that. Um, well, mine, I was trying very hard to write something unclassified that really should have been classified, at which point he kept beating me up saying, write it classified, and I kept holding him off because I wanted it to be unspecial. And uh, of course, I wrote a paper that was not really that great. But the one thing that happened with that paper, <laughs> so you know, it was what he told me to do. And what, but he, one of the things that he liked was for you to take that paper and then take it into the Navy and do something. And so my next assignment was down at OpNav, and I was able to take that paper and put that classified juice on top of it, you know, that he was wanting to do. And it ended up able to change a lot of things. At which point he said, you know, see. See, right? <laughs> so it, it worked out really well. But one of the things that I also, when I talk about his commitment to his Gravely students when he, uh, when, when he had that commitment, was he had a lot of really high expectations of you. And when I say high expectations, those expectations were that you would always do your best, but that you would also always come back and give back to Gravely. Um, I was saying something the other day to somebody, and I decided I am going to go ahead and mention this, is that... Uh, when you came back to Newport at any given time for whatever it is you needed to come, uh, it was it was expected that you would go by and kiss the ring. You know, that's, <laughs> you, you, you did. You had to make sure that you went in to see Doc. Um, but um, uh, in, a, in a addition to that, he wanted you to come back and share your experiences and, and tease the creative juices of your Gravely compatriots. Because it wasn't that, you know, yeah, I used to be a Gravely. I am a Gravely. That was what that was, that was that expectation that he had. Um, with that keeping track of us um, and that contribution uh, to, to future Gravely um, alum, all of that in, and in that mentorship, those high expectations, and this is something I shared uh, with you, Ray, that I think you got a kick out of when I uh, mentioned that uh, you, you had a sense of fear when you, once you became really involved with some of the things Doc Bundy was doing, but that sense of fear was not an evil fear. It was a fear of letting him down. He had those expectations of you, and you really, you, you had that, you, it instilled the expectations of yourself so that you then feared letting him down. So his impact, I know on me personally, was, uh, was large. And I think the other Gravely alum that I know, I was working with a couple of them at OpNav, and uh, all talked about Doc Bundy and his, uh, his impact on them. So um, he, his impact is still going to continue on. He was in the process of doing even more things, and I think those things will continue on. So I appreciate the opportunity to get, say a few words about my experience with Gravely, my experience with Doc Bundy, and, uh, and, and how that will always be a lasting part. Thank you very much. Captain Davis, thank you very much. It is now my pleasure to invite the Provost of the Naval War College, Dr. Lewis Duncan, to provide some comments about Professor Bundy from a faculty perspective. <clears throat> Provost? Well, thank you. Um, it's, it was my privilege over the last couple of years to work with Will as, uh, in his role as associate provost, so uh, quite directly, I worked for Will. Uh, 
and those of you who have worked with him know exactly what I mean. Uh, he was not about titles and positions, though. I mean, Will was a model of, of leadership as an action uh, and, and very much understood uh, how, how leadership worked in, in, as a verb, uh, not, not just in the positions that he held. In the, in the video it was mentioned, he took me to a number of different warfare centers and he knew everyone and everyone knew him. Uh, and if there was a key person that he didn't yet know, they were just destined to become his next best friend. Um, I, I thought it was important from a faculty perspective to actually recognize how special Will was. And so I'm gonna take a moment to read some, some of his accolades that uh, Many of you know, but perhaps not all. Uh, it was mentioned, actually, and uh, that he was a member of the, the Naval War College class of 1993 uh, with uh, colleagues Admiral Barrera and Admiral Verma, both in that class, and, I, and they just mentioned to me that Professor Jim Holmes was also a member of that class. So uh, I apologize that you were not able to lead the class, because I'm sure Will did, but uh, it, it must have been a very good year. Uh, speaking of that year in 1993, <clears throat> that was the year that Will was the National Black Engineer of the Year, uh, more than a quarter century ago, uh, receiving the top national award from, from uh, the Black Engineer of the Year Award organization. And uh, it, w it was a supreme honor for him, except that he wasn't done, obviously. I wanted to read, though, from the, the, the uh, commendation that he received at that time. He unselfishly dedicated himself to the attainment of true equal opportunity in the Navy, including efforts to provide higher education for m minority sailors and officer candidates, his exceptional leadership in the National Naval Officers Association, an inspirational rise from the enlisted ranks to the highest levels of command in a highly technical submarine force exemplify his exceptional role model status. Um, that was Will Bundy before he ever actually touched our lives. Uh, while he was the, the Black Engineer of the Year, uh, I never thought of Will as an engineer. I always thought of him as what, with, with all due respect to Disney, as an Imagineer. Uh, because he was always looking to the future uh, and imagining how we could reach faster and farther uh, than the rest of us had, had ever conceived. Uh, I wanted to, as I said, read a few of his accolades. His, uh, uh, his lists of first is extremely long. For example, in the entire 92-year history of the U.S. Navy submarine force, and this is dated just a bit from his from his award days. Uh, he is the only African American to rise to the commissioned stat status from the enlisted ranks and, and then to command a submarine. It was mentioned that he was a member of the Centennial Seven. The, the, in the first hundred years of the Submarine Corps, one of seven African Americans to rise to command and the only from the enlisted ranks. Before being assigned to the college of Naval Warfare at the Naval War College in Rhode Island in 1992. He served as a Chief of Staff, Chief of Staff Officer for uh, the Submarine Squadron 3. In this capacity, he was responsible for supervision and maintenance, training, deployment, and operation of up to eight nuclear attack submarines, a submarine tender, and a fly -droding do fly dr floating dry dock operated by over 2,500 soldiers soldiers and officers, enlisted personnel, all working with Dr. Bundy. Uh, he was the only chief staff officer employed as an officer in tactical command at sea and chief inspector in either the Atlantic or Pacific fleets. Um, the Baltimore native began his long climb to the top when he enlisted in the Navy in 1964 a graduate of the Baltimore City College, the Leeward Community College, and the University of Hawaii with distinction. He earned a bachelor's degree in technical journalism. I'm not sure what field of engineering that is exactly. Uh, after rising to a top enlisted 
rate as chief sonar technician. He successfully completed officer's candidate school in 1975. He then became the first officer in the Pacific Fleet to be certified as a strategic weapons officer. Along the way, his persistence and dedication earned him numerous awards, including the Defense Meritorious Service Medal, the Navy Meritorious Service Medal, the Navy Commendation Medal, with Silver Star, indicating six awards, and the Navy Achievement Medal with Gold Star. He also earned 17 other campaign and service awards. Just last year, we recognized uh, at one of our ceremonies here another award for uh, that Dr. Doc Bundy won, called the Honorable Order of St. Barbara. Um, the Honorable Award recognizes those individuals who have demonstrated the highest standards of integrity and moral character, displayed an outstanding degree of competence, and served the United States Army Air Defense Artillery Branch with selflessness. It's my understanding he was the only non-Army person to ever win that award. Uh, and that describes a little bit about Doc Bundy and how how his reach extended far beyond uh, just what we normally think of as, as our job. It was mentioned also that he worked at, at uh, Fleet Bank Boston for a while, uh, but money was never anything to will other than a means to an end uh, and not an end in itself. He was the director of the Department of Transportation here in Rhode Island. That seems totally appropriate, because if you knew Will, he was totally on the go. Uh, he attended Leadership Rhode Island and then took on the, the, the role of promoting Leadership Rhode Island here at the Naval War College so that we've had a participant every, every year since I've been here. Uh, and if there is such a thing as Leadership Heaven, he's already re leading that class as well, I'm sure. Uh, here at the college, his, 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 his last ambition uh, the project in which he was working hardest on was trying to develop uh, what he referred to as an innovation ecosystem. Uh, and it was very much his discussion of the need to innovate uh, faster and farther. His eyes were always on the horizon in terms of emerging technologies. Uh, and uh, it was very much in the sense that, uh, that Walter mentioned that uh, he was always talking about how it's not just thinking out of the box, but realizing that, that in many cases the boxes are our own creations and to think beyond those as well. I was pleased to be able to work with him uh, briefly, uh, although it was never brief with Will, uh, but participating uh, in the Starship Poseidon program uh, and the amazing STEM efforts that went into that. He touched many lives and that was just another example of how Will was a futurist. Uh, looking on the horizon, uh, helping all those around him, uh, selfless in so many ways. Um, every time he encountered a frustration or a challenge, uh, he always uh, reframed that as opportunity uh, and, and had a legacy of success. Uh, he was, in my mind, the... And, and he and I talked about philosophy and religion and a number of other things because you could never talk to Will and stay on topic. Uh, but uh, we, t we talked about uh, leadership and what it meant and uh, how he was a role model and symbolized for so many uh, the, the epitome of what uh, he and I referred to as servant leader. And so uh, on behalf of all of the faculty here at the War College and all of the students that he's touched, uh, all of the lives that he has influenced and all of the lives he's influenced through the lives that he's influenced, uh, he leaves a, a great wake behind him uh, and, and his legacy will live for a very long time in all those that he's touched. And so our greatest thanks to Dr. Doc Bundy, Will Bundy, servant leader. Dr. Duncan, thank you very much for your comments. It is now my honor uh, to invite Rear Admiral Chatfield, the 57th president of the U.S. Naval War College, to share her thoughts about Will and to present a couple of awards. Hello, friends of Will. 
Mrs. Bundy, Ray and Lisa, Vice Admiral Donnelly, uh, our distinguished CNO fellows, um, Admiral Verma, Barrera, Sanes, our deans, provost, our many uh, faculty and students who are here today. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, you heard the music in the back on your way in, uh, music uh, that uh, we specifically asked for uh, to be upbeat, uh, to really embody, first of all, jazz music that Will loved, and also the optimism and enthusiasm that he had every day when he walked through these halls. So thanks to the Navy band back there, uh, we really appreciate you coming here and helping us to celebrate this magnificent uh, individual. I didn't have as long with uh, Dr. Will Bundy as many people in the room. Many people have known him uh, more deeply, longer, but I do want to share the takeaways that I have from every encounter and from knowing uh, Dr. Bundy's family better and from interacting with people who have come together uh, over these past uh, days uh, since December uh, to share with me their stories about Dr. Bundy. Um, first of all, uh, you heard me say that I thought uh, Will was a connector of people. And I think that that's very valuable. And I spent some time talking to the Centennial Seven members who came into town last month. And as they stood around, they were sharing these memories. And these fantastic men had big smiles on their faces as they related specific characteristics. Uh, one of them was Will's commitment to branding. And so when I watched the, the um, statements that were made, I paid attention to branding. And I saw that there was a STEM camp t-shirt. I saw that there was a Centennial 7 t-shirt. And I saw that there was a Gravely group. Um, it was a very Gucci uh, vest. <laughs> uh, all branded so that you knew what you were about when you were in that group. And uh, furthermore, the Centennial Seven also, if they weren't wearing the shirt, uh, because many of them were, they were wearing the lapel pin. <laughs> so uh, a shirt, a t-shirt is uh, oftentimes not enough. Uh, but wearing something uh, that uh, brings a person together in common person, purpose also is a reminder a daily reminder, a weekly reminder of how to think differently. So it wasn't just the experience that you had. It was the commitment to the goals, the vision, and the particular elements of ways of thinking that would take you forward and you would incorporate into your daily life. And so uh, I learned that about Will. I learned that this man who was born 19 years before me should be my model about how I meter my life's energy. And I wish that we could take uh, the younger generation and expose them to somebody with an abundance of energy and an abundance of optimism every day, as I witnessed that Will had. Every day, uh, he had the ability to give you a smile. He had the ability to give you, maybe it was homework, maybe it was a reading assignment, but a commitment to doing something instead of just talking about it. And when you think you can do something, and if you have a habit of connecting to other people and building a network around it, then, in fact, you have action. And that was what was so remarkable. It was energy 
that was calculated to produce action. It came from a frame of mind, a way of thinking, a positivity, and optimism about the future. He never looked at a person and thought, that's all this person has. He thought, this is what this person could give. You know, he, he thought about it in an expansive way, not a constrained mindset. And that's so powerful to me as I, as I think about the way that we perpetuate these projects and these goals that Will had. So I talked to the provost yesterday and I said, well, how many people does it take to continue Will's projects? I said, because I'm gonna say five. And he said, it's at least five people that we must get commitment from to take these enduring projects, give them the life and give them the energy and make them expansive and be what they can be. One person requires five people to keep all those plates spinning. And it's work worth doing. And it's a mindset worth having. And it's a future worth striving for. I'm going to conclude now uh, by just saying, I know my life was made better through those interactions that I had with Will Bundy. I think the people that are in this room would say this st the same. And so I want to thank you for being here today, uh, for bringing that positive energy, for supporting Mrs. Bundy and her family, and supporting all of these tremendous possibilities that will take us down a more positive future from the interactions that we have had with our friend, Will Bundy. Thank you, Admiral. Um, will Mr. Raymond Bundy, Will and Jean's son, please join Admiral Chatfield on the stage. Uh, I will now read uh, the citation granting Professor Emeritus status to Dr. Bundy here at the Naval War Co College and accepting in honor of and on behalf of his late father is his son, Raymond Bundy. The president, U.S. Naval War College, in grateful recognition of manifold accomplishments and service, does hereby posthumously recognize William F. Bundy as Professor Emeritus in appreciation of his long and dedicated service to the U.S. Naval War College as Professor of Naval Studies it is my honor to confirm this appointment as Professor Emeritus on this date, the 13th of February, 2020, signed S.S. Chatfield, Rear Admiral, U.S. Navy. No, not yet. <laughs> There's more. It is really my honor to read the citation uh, for the Superior Civilian Service Award that recognizes the contributions Dr. Bundy made to this institution and to the Navy. And again, accepting this award is uh, Mr. Raymond Bundy. The president of the U.S. Naval War College takes pleasure in presenting the Superior Civilian Service Award to Professor William F. Bundy in recognition and appreciation of the superior services set forth in the following citation. For superior service as director of the Gravely Group, acting chairman, Warfare Analysis and Research Department, founder and director of Starship Poseidon STEM Camp, and associate provost for warfighting research and development at the U.S. Naval War College from May 2010 to December 2019. Demonstrating extraordinary dedication and inspirational leadership, Professor Bundy tirelessly worked to advance naval warfare research, including air and missile defense, quantum computing, artificial intelligence, command and control, and undersea warfare. His many achievements were realized through a variety of focused approaches, including mentorship of approximately 230 Gravely Group students, development of nine cooperative research and development agreements, and facilitation of 50 workshops and seminars to support senior Department of Defense and Navy stakeholders. 
Through his passionate involvement with Starship Poseidon STEM Camp, Professor Bundy personally mentored more than 450 high school students over a five-year span, encouraging them to pursue challenging careers in various STEM fields. His unrivaled energy and academic contributions ultimately led to his assignment as Associate Provost for Warfighting Research and Development. Professor Bundy's exceptional performance as a leader, educator, and innovator significantly contributed to the remarkable success enjoyed by the U.S. Naval War College. This reflected great credit upon him and we're keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Civil Service. Again, signed S.S. Chatfield, Rear Admiral, U.S. Navy, today, February 13th, 2020. Thank you very much. Do you have uh, the remarks on the atrium you could make? Okay. So, thank you, Admiral Chatfield. As we come to the close of this remembrance, I would like to leave you with uh, one last thought. And I've shared this, the, the foundation of this thought with many of my colleagues over the past uh, couple of years, and some of them have heard me, uh, have heard the root of this thinking before, but I think it applies to Will, and I'd like to share it with you today as we close out. So when many people get to a certain age, uh, they, um, uh, in, and this is different for everyone, they often ask themselves some significant questions about how they want to spend the rest of their lives. And for some, I've realized the question is, you know, what do we want to do now? And, and what things have they not done? And what did they always want to do? And then they set out maybe to, to take in experiences and activities um, that will provide them some level of fulfillment. And then others ask maybe a more altruistic question, uh, meaning what can I give back now at a certain age? You see many people who have led rich and successful lives ask themselves this qu question and then commit to serving others and lending support to, to noble causes. But I think there's a more challenging and difficult question, one that I've pondered myself, and that is what does the universe want from me, right? That's a very different question. And what is it, what are the special talents that you have as an individual uh, that uniquely position you to contribute positively to the universe? Maybe not what you wanna do, and maybe not what you wanna give, but what is needed, really what's truly needed. And when I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about Will, um, I thought this fit perfectly, because you know, first, Will was doing exactly what he wanted to do right up until his untimely passing. It's hard to imagine him doing anything else. He was doing what he wanted to do. And second, as we so poignantly have just heard from so many of Will's friends and colleagues, he was the embodiment of giving back. He didn't have to, at the end of his life, give back. He gave back throughout his entire life. And his life was the definition of service and helping others. Um, and lastly, I do really believe that Will aligned his talents and passion to the greater good of the universe every day. Right? That's not something he needed to do. And the universe and humanity was better for it. And he was living every day doing what the universe wanted from him. And, it's, and, and as the universe now has taken back one of its favorite sons, our brother, um, this give us, gives us an opportunity to reflect on our own lives in a very real way. That will is still serving us, helping us all be better by example for the example that he has set for us all. So, Gene, Raymond, Lisa and friends and colleagues of Will, this will conclude our ceremony today. Admiral, did you have one thing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have a, a, just a glitch in the in the flow, and I'm really sorry about that uh, because uh, we we had intended to make an announcement. I I just thought that it was in your script, not mine. Um, and so I do want to um, make sure that as the Bundy family leaves today, that we, uh, that we announce our commitment uh, to dedicating a space in McCarty Little Hall, which will, it was the atrium where Will spent most of his time. It's a beautiful space, a lot of imaginaire, what did you say? Imagineers. A lot of Imagineers will take their spot there and um, hopefully make their commitment and dedicate their energy, as we saw Will do, 
uh, through uh, a, a lovely uh, dedicated space in our college, uh, a remembrance of him and an area where we may have these grand and lofty um, ideas turn into action plans. Emerald okay. Chaffield, thank you very much for sharing that with us. We're really excited about that, and we hope to get you back here to, to um, dedicate that. So thank you very much. So this does conclude our ceremony. The Bundy family will be available to meet with faculty and students in Spruance Lobby, right in the back of the, the auditorium here, if you'd like to share a personal uh, story or experience with them. Uh, refreshments are uh, provided as a, gen a generous gift by our Naval War College Foundation, and I know there's some of our colleagues here for them. So thank you for all coming today, and would you please rise for the departure of the Bundy family and Rear Admiral Chatfield.